Hey Exalts, PvE Academy here. With 3.15 around the corner, it is time again to tackle the Atlas. This guide teaches you everything you need to know on how to navigate the current Atlas environment and how to efficiently progress through it all league start. Many thanks to Lunavolve for providing this well-written guide on poevault.com. Link is in the description. In the Conqueror of the Atlas expansion, the way the Atlas works was completely redone. This introduced things like map regions, Conqueror's influences and watchstones. This guide is accurate, regardless of where specific maps are located or which league is currently running. As long as the Atlas mechanic does not fundamentally change, which is highly unlikely outside of major expansions, this guide will work for you. Before we get into the Atlas strategy itself, we will have to quickly cover the fundamentals. White mobs may drop maps up to the same tier of the map that you are in. Blue and yellow mobs may drop maps up to one tier higher than the tier you are currently in. And finally, orange mobs may drop maps up to two tiers higher than the tier you are currently in. Furthermore, the only maps that are allowed to drop are maps that you have already unlocked by killing their map bosses or maps that are directly connected by lines to the map that you are running. Note that tier 1 maps ignore this rule, meaning that they can be dropped outside of maps and the story content starting from Act 8 onwards. Lastly, as you complete more and more bonus objectives for maps, completing the map as Magic Rare or Rare Corrupted, you will gain a permanent stacking buff. Each bonus contributes 1% towards maps being able to drop at a higher tier than their rules would otherwise allow. This bonus can go over 100% and continues to stack, increasing the possible level. For example, at a bonus of 113%, monsters always drop maps one tier higher and have a 13% chance of dropping maps two tiers higher. Keep in mind that this bonus does not supersede the aforementioned mob-related rules. A wide rarity mob will still only drop maps at maximum of equivalent tier to what you are running, regardless of this additional bonus chance. The Atlas itself is separated into 8 distinct regions. We hereby make a further distinction between inner and outer regions. As you can see, the atlas is split exactly in half, with four regions being considered inners and four being considered outers. Each region has exactly one citadel, which you will need to uncover by running three maps in that region. This implies a minimum amount of 24 maps split across all regions to unlock all citadels. The citadels are where you will be socketing your watchstones once you have obtained them and this determines the level of the region, depending on the amount of watchstones socketed. Each region has 5 different levels and the difficulty increases with the number of watchstones socketed. To obtain watchstones, you will have to kill conquerors in every region, up to 4 times in total to obtain every watchstone for that region. These are the basic watchstone rules. Every region can drop one of each, red, blue, green or yellow, watchstones. Each conqueror can only drop one watchstone per kill. And each conqueror can only drop one watchstone per region. With these basic rules out of the way, here are some tips to keep in mind while you follow the Atlas strategy. The very first priority is to unlock all 8 citadels. They are guaranteed to spawn once you complete your third map in any region. Always use Orbs of Alchemy on your maps. Always use Orbs of Binding and Orbs of Scouring to roll, reroll or Orbs of Alchemy if you ran out of them on your yellow, red tier maps. You don't need to focus on completing your Atlas. Try to get all the bonus objectives you can, but focus on gathering your Watchstones first and foremost over the completion bonuses. Zana missions are a great way to break into higher tiers. Try using your white Zana missions on T5s, yellow Zana missions on T10s and red ones whenever needed. Buy uncompleted or desired maps from Zana to boost your progression. Note that her inventory changes every time you complete one of her missions. Always try to juice your maps appropriately with your other master missions. June especially is a great choice to use in low-level white and yellow tier maps to save your Einhas, Zanas and Alvas for the max level of each tier. Nico should always be used on the max level map for each tier, similar to Zana. 
Once you've obtained some watchstones, feel free to use simple sextons and prime sextons as they can drastically increase the speed at which you can progress your atlas. To start with, we will need to unlock each of the conquerors to spawn them across the atlas. Be aware that you will not be able to spawn more than one conqueror if you've not beaten the very first conqueror yet. When a conqueror has spawned, it will influence that region on the atlas. We can tell when this happened as the influenced region will be highlighted with the conqueror's color and special effect. For the purpose of this guide, we will call the region that the first conqueror spawns in Region 1. Once a conqueror has spawned, you will need to complete three maps in the influenced area of the atlas to pinpoint the exact location for Kirok and Zana. Once completed, talk to Kirok and then to Zana to open the portals, run the map and kill the conqueror to obtain your first watchstone. Use this first watchstone immediately and socket it into any of the inner region's citadels. This will allow you to gather up all the maps you will require for the second rotation, which will be explained later. This region, for the purpose of this guide, will be called Inner Region 1. After this very first conqueror is done, simply move to any of the other three outer regions and repeat the process over there. You do not socket the second watchstone, however, as that would hamper our ability to gather the correct tier maps for the second rotation. Simply place the second watchstone into the holding inventory on the left side of your atlas. Once you have obtained the first three watchstones, socket two of the watchstones into any of the other inner regions that are adjacent to inner region 1. Simply store the fourth watchstone for later use. After unlocking each of the four different conquerors by killing them once in each corner, you are ready to get started with the atlas progression. As you've used your first watchstone immediately on one of the inner regions, you should have acquired many maps that are of the correct tier to progress the conqueror hunt in your inner region 1. Simply run your saved up maps for that area and that area only. You will do this until you've defeated all four conquerors in that specific inner region. You don't have to switch watchstones, change the region you're running, buy maps or anything else if you've done everything as laid out in this guide. Once you've acquired your sixth watchstone, use your three leftover ones. Remember, we have socketed the first, second and third watchstone into the atlas already to socket them into the region adjacent to inner region 2. The citadel in inner region 1 should now tell you that no conqueror can be spawned anymore in that region. Once you've reached this stage, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel and move on to the next step. With the previously prepared Inner Region 2, we will continue in the same exact way as we've done it with Inner Region 1. You should now be running yellow maps, which should have dropped during your previous rotation, if everything went according to plan. Simply run your yellow maps that you have in Inner Region 2 until you've acquired all four Conqueror's Watchstones in it as well. Once you've acquired your 10th total watchstone, socket your 4 leftover ones into the last remaining inner region, so called inner region 4. Once you've acquired your 12th total watchstone, socket your 2 leftover ones into 2 different outer regions. We do this to increase our awakening level to 3, making our progression easier in the long run. The citadel in inner region 2 should now tell you that no conquerors can spawn anymore. Similar to the previous rotation, you should have most, if not all, of the maps required to complete this rotation as we've prepared Inner Region 3 very early on. You should now be breaking into the lower red tier maps. Simply repeat the process from the previous rotations until you've acquired all 4 watchstones in this Inner Region as well. Once you've acquired all 16 watchstones, you will want to fully socket one of the outer regions and evenly distribute the leftover watchstones to the outer regions. Each region should now have its citadel set up properly like this. The citadel in Inner Region 3 should now tell you that no conquerors can spawn anymore, similar to the one in Inner Region 1 and 2. At this stage you will be solidly placed in red maps and you will reach the first major hurdle of the Atlas progression. Gaining maps and getting the proper map drops will be quite hard at this stage of the mapping progression, but with this strategy it shouldn't be impossible. Be aware that at this stage the conquerors gain a major increase in their tankiness and damage output, so prepare your build to deal with the new difficulty. 
Continue the previously explained behavior in Inner Region 4 by killing all four conquerors in it and obtaining their watchstones. Similar to before, do not socket any of the watchstones gained until you've acquired all four of them. Once you've acquired a total of 20 watchstones, you will want to fully socket one of the other outer regions and evenly distribute the leftover watchstones to the other outer regions. Additionally, you will now have to fight your very first Cyrus. This boss fight is fairly hard and extremely difficult to read at first glance, so do not be afraid to look up some guides or videos on it. It is also not important to actually succeed in defeating the boss to continue with your atlas progression, which is quite important to know. Each region should now have its citadel set up properly like this. The citadel in Inner Region 4 should now tell you that no conquerors can spawn anymore, similar to the one in Inner Region 1. At this stage, the atlas progression slows down tremendously. Collecting watchstones 21 to 32 is the most time-consuming and painful part of the whole process due to a few important changes to the Conqueror rules. Now, each Conqueror can only spawn once per rotation or Cyrus run. The Conqueror will not automatically spawn on the first map that you run in a region. Once spawned, the Conqueror will not spawn in the next two maps like it did previously. And the total numbers of maps required to initiate the Conqueror boss fight will now be 5, 7 or 9 instead of the previously required 3. With bad RNG, this means that you require up to 36 T14 to T16 maps to complete one rotation. Especially early in the league, this is extremely painful and time consuming, but unfortunately there is no shortcut to this. The only thing you have to watch out for at the stage is that each other region cannot spawn one particular conqueror. The conqueror you've beaten at the very beginning in that region must not spawn in that particular region as they would not be able to drop a watchstone. As such, make sure to keep an eye out on which conquerors are spawning where and run your outer region in case that the last remaining conqueror is the one that you don't want to spawn in your current region. Once you've acquired all four watchstones of each rotation, adjust your citadels accordingly. You will want to remove watchstones from completed outer regions to not dilute the possible high tier map drop pool and allow your two main regions to drop all of them. Each region should now have its citadel set up properly like this. Rinse and repeat until you've completed your atlas progression with all 32 watchstones in hand. Always try to keep at most two outer regions at four watchstones. These are the two regions you intend to run in that rotation. You can now also fill up all the inner region citadels with four watchstones as they don't dilute the pool nearly as much. Once you've acquired all 32 watchstones, fully socket your atlas citadels. Every single region should now feature red maps only, ranging from tier 14 to tier 16 maps. At this point, you will want to focus your attention on bonus and awakening objectives. This means that you will never want to run a map below T14. Remember to double check the awakening objective as some maps exist as both tier 14 and tier 16 versions. Additionally, keep in mind that most maps will not require Val orbs for their bonus or awakening objectives as only natural T11 plus maps require this. Make sure to check each map individually before you accidentally Val maps that don't require it. At this stage, you can freely ignore Conquerors and Cyrus as you should be focusing entirely on getting your bonus and awakening objectives up as high as possible as fast as possible. Throughout this whole lengthy process, you might find yourself getting bored of your League start character and feeling the itch to reroll. To comfortably roll a second character and not be at too much of a disadvantage in the softcore economy, your atlas should be at around 120 to 130 completion bonus with around 100 awakened completion bonus. Hopefully this guide made it easier for you to approach your atlas. I know it can be intimidating at first glance, but if you follow this guide strictly, you will have no problems whatsoever. Don't forget to check out the written build guide by Lunawolf over at poevault.com. Thanks for staying with me until the end, and see you in the next one.